As we approach the middle point of the month of July, our attention once again turns close to home off the Gulf Coast of Florida to as far west as the boot of Louisiana. Our models seem to be honing in on that area. So is Climate Prediction Center as of their update yesterday. Welcome back, everyone, to the Weather Center. We are now officially all set up here with the Mobile Weather Center here in Norfolk, Virginia. As promised, I told you I would not drop the ball despite everything that's been going on to get you the information that you need. We've got a lot to cover today, so thank you so much for not only your continued support, but for taking some time out of your Wednesday evening to join me here in the Mobile Weather Center in Virginia while I'm away with the United States Navy. Before we go any further, I want to openly express just how amazing your comments have been to read over the last few days since starting this trip away from Central Florida. I cannot use the proper words to really convey what they've meant to me and the inspiration, the motivation, and the courage that they've given me not only to once again stare this bit of a challenge directly in the eyes and take it head on, but also so continue to work hard as a meteorologist, as your meteorologist, to get you the information despite all the rigmarole that's going on with my schedule. So if you're brand new to the channel, please kindly consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's give that like button a little nudge. Share this information with folks you think would benefit from it. And drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if I'm closer to you now being stationed up here in Virginia for the time being. Or if you're watching elsewhere across the United States and the Caribbean, wherever it is you're tuning in from. We're very happy to have you as a member of the Weather Center community. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So here is National Hurricane Center's homepage. And we are quiet once again. Chantal dissipated a few days back after moving ashore in the Carolinas and then washing out over top where I am currently before exiting the northeast coast of the United States. Picked back up in the jet. Over time, as we move through the next seven days, I'm going to be watching right down here right down there and then naturally we are continuing to see growing signs that after july 15th the mdr of the atlantic as it continues to warm up it's starting to look a little on the healthier side to tell you the truth and it's been very interesting to watch the evolutions of our temperatures down there we're going to continue to watch both these areas close to home and then down across the atlantic i do think close to home is going to be where our signal begins to pop up first as we get closer to July 15th, if you took notes during my last update, that's going to be the time frame we're tracking. And then between the 18th to the 22nd is when I think we may have the potential to try and spin up our next named storm. Models are definitely coming into agreement, but I'm also going to walk you through a pretty hefty discontinuity that we're seeing right now as well. Let's get you over to the satellite. Let me get my face out of the way again so we can do some doodling here. We've got a very active weather pattern. I should say I just left a very active weather pattern across the southeast United States. You can see the Bahamas smothered in some really good thunderstorm action. Same with Cuba, Cayman Islands, Jamaica getting in on a little of the action as a tut low continues to move through the pattern. It's centered pretty much right over top the Cayman Islands. Let me go ahead and clear the ink. Go ahead and draw the little L right there. It's slowly moving through the pattern, helping to increase our wind shear, which is why there's absolutely nothing happening. Tropical, anyway in the Caribbean, and we have another layer of Saharan air coming across right in through there. It may be a little difficult for you all to see, but that's also helping to suppress the Atlantic side of things in the main development region. Believe it or not, this here is what's left of Chantal. You can see it rapidly accelerating with the upper air pattern across the mid-latitudes, headed towards Europe at this point. It's now reattached to the jet, so that's no longer tropical of any way. And then our AOIs out there in the Pacific, notice I didn't bring the home page into the Pacific at all because everything's tapered off in the East Pack. We really just don't have anything going on right now. It's the Western Pacific that's doing its thing right now. Now, here is the latest from Climate Prediction Center, the Global Tropics Outlook. And it does seem like CPC between the 16th and the 22nd, right on the money with where we've been investigating as well, they're giving the Gulf from East Texas all the way to the Gulf Coast of Florida an above 20% shot at some tropical cyclone formation. This could possibly go up. These update every Tuesday. So we're going to be watching as next Tuesday rolls in to see if they bump us 
up to 40% if the signal that we're going to be watching holds steady. And then honestly, beyond that, I'm a little surprised they don't have anything for the 23rd through the 29th because that's when we're looking for the passage of our MJO once again. Models aren't really showing anything right now for the end of the month, although I do think that could change, especially given the propagation that we're seeing in our MJO. But we'll go ahead and stay in a holding pattern right now. We're just going to continue to monitor close to home. And this is why I think that is. If you notice our PNA, the Pacific North American Oscillation, we finally trended away from the extensive duration of a negative phase of this thing. And basically negative phase means big old ridge over the east. That's what was helping to cook our trade winds, easterly trade winds throughout the Atlantic. That has since weakened down. The same thing with our North Atlantic Oscillation. You come over to that, the NAO, and notice we're finally coming out of that slightly positive phase and we're going to remain somewhat negative, if not neutral, throughout the month of July. And truthfully, this is what has a lot of us tropical meteorologists wondering, hey, how warm is the Atlantic going to get? And are we going to continue to see those cool anomalies that once smothered the MDR continuing to nudge off towards the north? Now, the reason I bring the PNA up is if you notice, there is a small acceleration towards a positive phase right around the 12th through the 14th. You look at the bottom of the chart there and then we go right back to a negative phase and then again into a positive phase this ebbing and flowing indicates that we're going to have a trough and then eventually a ridge and then another trough moving through the eastern half of the united states both of these are going to try to do what happened with chantal drop a little bit of that spin and low mid-level energy somewhere either off the southeast co coast or potentially in the gulf is what our models are indicating right now and i'll show you that we kind of have a couple interesting things happening. We're going to use the GFS because the GFS, the Euro, the Canadian, the Icon, even a lot of our global models are all picking up the same thing. The discontinuity lies in the timing, and I'll show you that as well. But if you watch, there's a couple different key players here. Here's that negative PNA. You see the ridge extending through the eastern United States. Nice shortwave trough coming in to wreak havoc on that pattern once again. And then notice this breakaway bubble of lower heights little bit of upper level cool air that's worked its way underneath the broad amplitude ridge across our Atlantic. Not quite a Rex block pattern, but definitely similar to that. That's another upper low, a kind of like a tut, if you will, that's broken away under the pattern. So watch what happens here. Shortwave and increase in our jet stream winds over the United States helped to topple that negative PNA phase. Remember, I just showed you the actual line graph of the teleconnection. And as we go right through this time, this is Sunday, July 13th, we're going to see that pattern retrograde out of a negative to a positive phase. And what that's also going to do is gravitate that upper low there right up into the southeast United States. So it's another one of those scenarios where regardless of development, we're going to see our rain chances and our thunderstorm chances go way up for our friends down there in the southeast, my neighborhood, even though I'm up here in the mid-Atlantic right now. But then notice what happens here. We get our ridging to build back in. There's the transition between the positive and the negative and then back to the positive once again. And I think that's where our models are struggling. So as you see that little ball of energy wander its way into the eastern gulf, we get another shortwave right around that same time that I showed you in the teleconnection chart on the Euro, getting close closer to the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th to where our pattern wiggles and wobbles again. And that's going to continue to bully this upper low towards the west. And I do think that combined with some breakaway energy from a front that's going to be down there as well could try to spin up our next system. You can see here by July 17th, moving into the 18th, we get a little area of low pressure, very sloppy. I don't quite think this is our final solution. And granted, this is still quite a ways away. This is about 10 days out, give or take, 9 to 10 days. So we've got a lot of ironing out to do. The Euro probabilities definitely show it, though. You can see the tropical cyclone activity really ticking up between the 16th, the 17th of July. There's the 17th, and it just continues to go up from there. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit more. There you have it, the 20th and into the 21st. Now, that's where the discontinuity begins. If you come over to the GFS... 
And notice the timing here. This is Sunday the 20th, but if I go back to the 18th, for example, we're already starting to see some kind of cyclogenesis just to the southwest of Tyndall Air Force Base, Panama City, the Pensacola area, and southern Alabama. Then it slowly lifts up towards the north, and whatever that thing is decides to move ashore right along the Pensacola, or should say Florida-Alabama border, possibly as far west as Louisiana coastline and Mississippi, but that's neither here nor there. Don't worry about the states right now. I'm just kind of calling it out in case you're not looking at your screen right now. Something's expected to try to manifest in the Gulf and then move inland by about the 20th, if not the 21st. You switch over to the Euro model, however, and watch the delay here. The delay is fairly extensive. I'll get my face out of the way in case you want a better view. Now notice here is July 17th. There's nothing down there. You go to the 18th, the same time, nothing down there. You're finally starting to see the front coming down right in through there. You go to the 20th, still nothing down there. We're starting to see almost like a Chantal 2.0 off the upper northeast coast of Florida, the Georgia coastline. And then something tries to tighten up, wander right over the state of Florida, and begin to try to get underway, albeit a very short-lived scenario on this model run. You come back to 12Z yesterday. 12Z yesterday was far more interesting. Look at that. And this is the 23rd of July. So a bit of a gap, if you will, in timing. GFS Canadian model are a little on the early side between the 16th to the 18th. The Euro, and I've noticed the Icon, even though it doesn't quite go out that far, tries to cluster up our vorticity a little bit further in time. And to tell you the truth, I kind of I'm rooting for this thing to kind of hold off at least until about the 19th or the 20th. I'm supposed to be back in Central Florida very early on the 19th, so I'm hoping I can catch this thing from home base before continuing on with other conferences and things and whatnot in West Florida. So this would be ideal. If we can get this thing to push pause at least until Tuesday, Wednesday of the following week, I'll be right there pretty much at ground zero to watch what happens off the Florida West Coast. The GFS ensembles, as we get ready to close out, do show some kind of genesis out there across the Gulf by about the 16th to the 18th. Once again, you can see a nice little area of low pressure, at least one individual member that organizes a broad tropical storm pushing into Louisiana. And then we lose the signal altogether, whereabouts the Euro wants to call for. You come over to the Euro model, the ensembles, I should say, and it isn't until the 21st we start to see, you know, very raggedy pockets of low pressure out there. Nothing very impressive at all, at least on the Euro ensembles. You switch over to the AI ensembles, and they're a lot more in tune with what the operational Euro is showing. You notice the timestamp in the upper right corner here. This is middle of the day on Sunday the 20th, and it isn't until that Monday we start to see our low-pressure members really begin to blossom. And that's a fairly decent signal, not a large signal by any means, but definitely something worth watching. And I find it very interesting that the AI model shows maybe one or two very sloppy members with the progression of that upper low, but then it starts to capture a somewhat more organized developing signal as we get into that following week after the weekend of the 19th and the 20th. Definitely going to wait and see. There's definitely a promising signal out there, at least in terms of where we need to be watching and watching the trends as we go day to day. And I'm going to make sure to bring you the latest on all that as we move forward through time. Again, not a menacing signal. Does not seem like anything extravagant at all. This could be just another tropical storm. Next name on the list is Dexter. And I don't want to start talking landfall or intensity predictions this far out. So I know for Chantal, for example, we did a, a floor and a ceiling scenario. Let's get a little closer in time. As we go through this weekend and get into next week, approaching my last few days here in Virginia, if this does stick, then we can begin to talk about, okay, once this thing develops, what are potential impacts? What's the potential ceiling for it? The max expected outcome? The lowest expected outcome? Will a Kelvin wave in the pattern? Will the upcoming passage of the MJO dictate this at all? Will our models come better into alignment. So that's kind of where we are right now. We're just in the monitoring phase. Not going to make any predictions out there, and I don't want to start talking landfalls or named storms because, as you can see, even though we have the signal, our models are still very, very wishy-washy in terms of timing, intensity, location, development. So right now, we're just going to watch the signal. It's a promising signal. Our models are all capturing it, but from there, we're just not quite sure yet. But you can count on me to keep you updated every step of the way as we move forward, especially through the rest of this week and into next 
And that'll just about do it for this latest iteration of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you all so much for your kind and generous support. It's been fantastic talking to each and every one of you, and I look forward to continuing to do that as we get closer to the peak of the hurricane season. Oh, and if you're still watching, by the way, CSU did in fact come down one named storm in their July outlook. That did update earlier today. They're now calling for 16 total named storms, but they've held steady in their hurricane and major hurricane forecasts and kept the ace west of 60 fairly elevated. So fairly interesting, I would say. I'm surprised that some of our organizations are coming down, but that's neither here nor there. We have a lot of close-to-home development going on, so truthfully, even if we have just another four to five named storms, if they all develop close to home and make landfall with impacts similar to Chantal with the widespread flooding or Barry and the number that it's done in central Texas, the numbers at the end of the day are just kind of a lottery game. So I'm not really going to obsess too much over those. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope this week has treated you well so far, and it continues to do so. We'll see you again very soon. Until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.